Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon for the next um, Is It Grand Rounds webinar. Uh, this time, we will focus on recent advances in hematopoietic stem cell transplantation for inborn errors of immunity. Um, and we will focus on haploidentical transplantation, which has probably been the major milestone in transplantation for inborn errors in the last five to 10 years. And we have two uh, very uh, proficient experts on the subject. And the first speaker today will be Dr. Suhan Lum from Newcastle uh, Great North Children's Hospital. And the second speaker will be Benedict Neven from the Care Children's Hospital in Paris. Um, we will listen to both talks right after each other. And at the very end, we will have a Q&A session where all your uh, questions will be answered. Please um, submit them during the talks. We will see them uh, and sort them and then ask them to the speakers at the very end. Thank you very much. Sohan, the floor is yours. So firstly, thank you so much to EC for the opportunity to present to you in this grand round. Sorry for the problem with the slides. So this is the outline of our discussion today. To set the scene, we first look at the donor ability for inborn errors of immunity in short IEI before 2010 versus after 2010. This is to highlight the importance of optimizing transplant strategy for mismatch and haploidentical donor transplants. Then I'm going to show you that transplants using haploidentical donor has improved with either alpha beta depletion or post transplant cyclophosphamide, in short PTCY. Followed by the real world data from EBMT inborn errors working party study on comparing transplant outcomes between alpha beta depletion and PTCY. A total of 40 transplant centers have participated in this study. Like many other indications on transplant, the big question is what about hyperamnigal donor versus mesh family or amnigal donor transplant for IEI? To date, we don't have published data for PTCY versus mesh donor for IEI, but we have published data on alpha beta depletion versus mesh donor for IEI. Based on this data, we will discuss about the major challenging challenges for developing universal donors and a potential solution using memory T cell effect in the last couple of minutes. In Newcastle, a few years ago, we did an audit to look at the donor type used for IEI transplant from 1987 to 2019. Between 1987 and 2009, of 269 per transplants, one third had mesh family donor, one third had mesh unrated donor, and remaining one third had been mesh family or unrated donor transplant. After 2010, of about 200 transplants for IEI, the proportion of mesh family donor has reduced from one third to one quarter, and this likely reflects the changing family structure in our modern society. The proportion of mesh under donor has increased from one third to nearly half. However, despite increasing number of donor registry and called birth banking worldwide, after 2010, a third of patients still do not have a mesh family or unmade donor. This histogram shows us the number of transplants according to donor type for 2012 to 2020 in Newcastle. Red indicates alpha beta depleted haploid undergo donor transplant, blue for mats, yellow for mesh family donor, and green for unmarried donor, unmarried beta mismatch family or unmarried donor transplant. Here we can see the number of alpha beta depleted haploid transplant has increased substantially in the past 10 years, for only one in 2012 to consistently more than 10 transplants per year since 2019. In fact, in 2021, we performed 18 alpha pipeta haploid transplant, more than the marked transplant number of 11. More importantly, we have not used unmanipulated mismatch donor graphs since 2019. 
Historically, hepatic donor transplant using old methods such as CAMPAC one edge was deemed unsafe because of high transplant related mortality due to toxic myeloid epi conditioning, GVHD, graft failure, and infection secondary to slow immune reconstitution. Different graft manipulation methods have been introduced since 1990, include CD34 selection, CD3, CD19 depletion, alpha beta depletion, and more recently, CD45 IA depletion. These SVO T cell depletion methods have overcome major HR barriers, reduced GHD, and improved immune reconstitution. In 2002, John Hawking Group has introduced another promising strategy using PTCY. Like many transplant centers in East Castle, we have used different SVO T cell depletors methods for IEI over the past 30 years, starting from CAMPAC 1M in 1987, followed by CD34 selection and CD3 CD19 depletion. We have been using alpha beta depletion since 2012. In our center, the overall survival has improved from 58% after CAMPAC 1M to 84% after alpha beta depletion. Similarly, the event-free survival has improved from 46% after CAMPAC 1M to 81% after alpha beta depletion. We have observed late event in CD34 selection for which patient requires second procedure, including second transplant for skipping chimerism. For PDCY, Panetics Group has shown a very good result using bucephalin based conditioning with alentuzumab and rituximab. In her study, 15 patients with IEI and 6 patients with HLH were included. Overall survival for IEI was 73% and overall survival for HLH was 66%. And overall survival for osteopetrosis was 100%, which is amazing. About 50% developed acute GHD but only two patients had quick three acute GVHD and 20% had chronic GVHD. Michael Groves had also presented another impressive result using PTCY in children with inborn errors, and his study included five patients with IEI and seven patients with hemoglobinopathy. Charlson based condition with alentuzumab was still in this study. Overall survival was very good, 96%, and event free was 77%. Only two patients developed grade one acute GVHD, none has severe acute GVHD, and chronic GVHD. Now, what about the real world data? In order to address this question, we have performed this multi center retrospective cohort analysis using EPMG registry data with additional data collection. We recruited patients who were less than 18 years of age at transplants and underwent first transplant between 2010 to 2018. The inclusion criteria were inborn errors or immunity or autoimmune or autoinflammatory disorder and first transplant with either alpha beta depletion or PTCY form at least one antigen mismatch donor. We excluded patients who received additional cellular therapy post transplants as part of the transplant protocol, as such as T cell effect or cytotoxic T lymphocytes. In terms of outcome interest, in this presentation, we will focus on overall survival, event free survival. GVHD free, event free survival, acute and chronic drug versus whole disease, and toxicity. Variable included for predicted analysis were T cell depletion methods, alpha beta depletion versus PTCY, diagnosis skid versus non skid, age and transplant, pre transplant infection, organ damage, autoimmunity, malignancy, and number of pre transplant morbidities. During the presentation, we will highlight the significant predictors to you. As mentioned earlier, we received data from 40 transplant centers worldwide, mainly from Europe, but also Brazil, Saudi, Moscow, India, Melbourne, and Sydney. We are going to present the important findings to you in the following sequence, starting from study population, 
Asian and transplantation characteristic outcomes of interest for the entire cohorts. We have also performed subgroup analysis to look at the transplant outcome in skid and non-skid IEI. A total of 296 patients fulfilled the inclusion criteria. The medium age at transplant for the entire cohorts was one for four years. A most equal number of patients had PTCY and alpha beta fixation. For age at transplant, there was no significant difference between PTCY and alpha beta depletion. Looking at the diagnosis, the proportion of skid and non skid IEI was similar between PTCY and alpha beta depletion. In both groups, about one third was skid and two thirds were non skid IEI. With regards to pre transplant comorbidity, we focus on pre transplant infection, that is, active infection within 100 days of transplants, organ damage, pre-transplant autoimmunity, and malignancy. Compared to alpha beta depletion, PTCY has significantly higher pre-transplant infection and organ damage. 85% of PTCY had pre-transplant infection compared to two-thirds in alpha beta depletion. Slightly more than half of PTCY had organ damage prior to transplant compared to one-third in alpha beta depletion. For pre-transplant autoimmunity and malignancy, there were no significant differences between PTCY and alpha beta depletion. About one quarter of patients in both groups have autoimmunity pre-transplant and about 10% have pre-transplant malignancy. Turning to donor type, both groups use mismatch primary donor in the majority of transplants. Only 5% use mismatch primary donor. As we expected, the ring stem cell source was narrow in PTCY and PPSC in alpha beta depletion. A small number of patients for both groups use a combination of narrow and PPSC. In terms of conditioning, the practice was significantly different between both groups. Field based conditioning was used in two thirds of PTCY. In contrast, trial supplement was used up to 60% of alpha beta depletion. The use of zero therapy was also significantly different between both groups. In PTCY, almost half used ATG and one third used alentuzumab. In alpha beta depletion, three quarter used ATG and only 4% used alentuzumab. Almost one quarter of patients from both groups did not receive zero therapy. GVG populates also differ between two groups. Majority of PTCY received dual GVHD prophylaxis with a salicin, uridine inhibitor, and MMF. In alpha beta depletion group, less than one fifth had dual GVHD prophylaxis. Three quarters received monotherapy with either calcium urine inhibitor or MMF. And 13% of alpha beta depletion did not receive any GVHD prophylaxis. Now we look at the graph composition. Alpha beta depletion has significant higher total nucleated cell dose and CD34 positive stem cell dose, plus lower CD3 positive T cell dose. Of note, the medium CD34 positive stem dose was 18.8 in alpha beta depletion, which was two times higher than PTCY with a medium of 8.3. And as expected with a higher CD34 positive stem cell dose, the neutrophil engraftment was faster in alpha beta depletion with a medium day to neutrophil recovery of 13 compared to 17 in PTCY. Now we are going to present to you the main outcomes of interest. Firstly, overall survival. This graph shows that the three-year overall survival was 81% after alpha beta depletion and 65% in PTCY. On multivariate analysis, T cell depletion methods were the only independent predictor for overall survival. Alpha beta depletion have a better survival with a hazard ratio of 0.54 and a pay value of 0.02. Organ damage, infection, and number of pre-transplant morbidity were not significant. Moving to event-free survival. In this analysis, event-free survival was defined as survival without graph failure and second procedure. There was no significant difference between two groups, 69% after alpha beta depletion and 63, or 57% after PTCY. 
A multivariate analysis, present organ damage or independent predictor for event-free survival with a hazard ratio of 1.82. Turning to acute GHD, there's a trend of higher incidence of grade 2 to 4 acute GHD after PDCY at 30% compared to 19% after alpha beta depletion. For severe grade 3 to 4 acute GHD, it was significantly higher in PTCY at 15% compared to 7% after alpha beta depletion. For chronic GHD, the cumulative incidence was 11% after PTCY and 6% after alpha beta depletion. Moving to GHD free event free survival GFS, in this analysis, GFS is defined as survival without graph failure. Second procedures, severe grade 3 to 4 acute GHD and chronic GHD. GFS was significantly higher after alpha beta depletion at 60% compared to 41% in PTCY. Now focusing on post transplant varemia, alpha beta depletion had significantly higher incident adenal varemia, about 20% compared to 8% after PTCY. CME varemia occurred about in about 40% of PTCY and alpha beta depletion, and EBV infection occur in about 10% of whole group. For toxicity, PTCY had higher incidence of VOD, acute kidney injury, and pulmonary complication. VOD occur in 14% of PTCY compared to 5% in alpha beta depletion. The incidence of hemorrhagic suicide is about 9% in PTCY compared to 3% in alpha beta depletion. Acute injury was three times higher in PTCY compared to alpha beta depletion. And on notes, primary complications occurred in 38% of PTCY compared to 23% of alpha beta depletion. For cardiac complication, transplant associated microangiopathy and coprophopathy, whole transplant lymphoproductive disease and autoimmune cytopenia, there were no significant differences between PTCY and alpha beta depletion. Looking at the cause of death, although more severe GVHD was seen in PTCY, only one died of GVHD. The main causes of transplant-related death in both groups were infection and respiratory failure. Of note, about one third of patients for both groups were reported died of disease-related complication of progression. Now we're going to look at the result according to SCID and non-SCID IEI. In the interest of time, we will look at overall survival and GHD free event-free survival for this subcode analysis. Of 99 SCID patients in this study, 57 have alpha beta depletion and 43% have PTCY. For SCID, the overall survival was 80% after alpha beta depletion and 67% after PTCY. GFS was comparable between two groups, 50% after alpha beta depletion and 46% after PTCY. How about non skid IEI? Of almost 200 patients, again, equal number of patients received PTCY and alpha beta depletion. Overall survival was significantly better after alpha beta depletion at 82% compared to 63% after PTCY. Similar observation was seen for GFS, 62%, 67% after GFS and 39% after PTCY. And mm -hmm. the most important take home message from this study are both alpha beta depletion and PTCY have proven efficacy in patient with IEI, but both also need further optimization. Like many other retrospective study, the main limitations of this study are, firstly, this study included heterogeneous patients and transplant practice, and secondly, missing data have recruited important and reliable comparison for toxicity, immune reconstitution, and chimerism. In order to overcome these limitations, we are now focusing a prospective multi-center observation study of immune reconstitution, viral dynamics, health economics, and patient reported outcomes after haploid transplant for IEI. We are at the stage of planning and feasibility check, and we welcome your suggestion and opinion for this proposal. In the last part of discussion, we will now focus on haploid undergo donor versus mesh family 
or unrated journal transplant? And as we know, this is a very important question for making a transplant decision. Newcastle have published a couple of studies in comparing a HEPA versus MASH donor in skid and non skid IEI. In Newcastle, all patients received trial certain phase conditionings in 2007, but different seroterapies are used according to donor type. For MASH family and non donor donor, Alentusmet is used. For alpha beta depletion, ADG Coughlin is used. In infants with severe combined immune skin, we had demonstrated a comparable survival between haplo, mesh family, and unmarried donor and cord blood transplant. The survival after haplo identical donor transplant is 92%. We have also reported similar survival in young children with non skin IEI, as shown here, we overall survival of reaching 90%. For both alpha beta depleted heparin transplant and also mesh donor transplants, in the older patient more than five years of old age, the survival was significantly inferior at sixty percent in heparin transplant, and the main cause of death in these patients in this infection. In terms of GVHD, for grade two to four acute GVHD, the incidence was eighteen percent after alpha beta depletion which is comparable to mesh family marrow and lower than 26% in mesh amida PBSC. For your, for your information, PBSC is a preferred stem cell source in Newcastle. None had chronic GVHD in the entire cohorts. In our study, we have identified three major obstacles for developing universal donor strategy. Despite using TCR alpha beta depletion, Delay immune constituent remains an important clinical issue to us. Looking at the time for CD3 T cell reaching 200, it was significantly lower in alpha beta depletion with a mean of 120 days compared to mark PPSC with a mean of 66 days. And this inevitably leads to a second obstacle increased varemia. The cumulative incidence of any varemia is 80% after alpha beta depletion compared to 55% after months PPSC transplant. And the third obstacle is asset transplant related mortality in the older patient due to infection as we have shown in the previous slide. Learning about this obstacle, we have initiated a clinical trial to explore the efficacy and safety of memory T cell to improve immunity after heparin transplant for patients with non skid IEI in short hepoplast for kids. And this hepoplast for kids trial is done in collaboration with Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital in Leiden and is funded by the UK Medical Research Council and also supported by Nutani. This study also includes pan PKS study for all the conditioning regimen and seroterapy, food driving, trial supplement, dietary by ADG and LN2 and we hope to recruit the first patient coming September. This is the outline of our study. In the interest of time, we'll just highlight a few important points about the study design. This is a four-year study. In the stage one, we will test three different doses of memory T cell, starting for a lower dose, 0.3 uh, million per kilo, followed by 0.6 and 1 million per kilo. We will then choose one dose we give the most promising T cell reconstitution re without significant GVHD to be tested in stage two. The result will be compared with two prospective control groups, alpha beta depletion without airbag and mesh amulet donor. And this is a rare disease trial. Historical call will be also included for analysis. This is our primary and secondary endpoint and mechanistic endpoint for the trial. While waiting for the trial to start recruiting patients, we have very encouraging results from our first eight non skid IEI patients in our pilot project. The diagnosis of this patient include MHH class 2 deficiency, CGD, interleukin 2 receptor beta chain deficiency, SEP70 deficiency, LAD, and SLP with HLH. The median age at transplant was 2.4 years and all had active infection prior to transplants. In patients who received memory T cell add back, here you can see that. The, the median time for CT3 to reach uh, 268 days, which is similar to month. PBSC. In fact, three patients had CTG count more than 200 by day past 28. We have now recruited 
um, 25 patients in this pilot project and are analyzing the data now. We hope to present the data to you in the upcoming meeting. Finally, thank you for everyone who has been involved in all the project and thank you to you for listening. Um, thank you very much, Suhan. And as I said before, we will have all the questions answered after both talks. And um, we're now switching uh, to Dr. Benedict Neven from Paris, who will give her uh, experience with haploidentical transplantation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. And uh, hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to join you uh, today. And the idea is to present you today uh, the monocentric uh, data on um, PTCY uh, for inborn errors of immunity in a monocentric uh, disease, knowing that we have started this program in, in Paris uh, late 2014, uh, and uh, uh, the numbers of transplant has progressively increased uh, over time uh, since then. And because at the beginning, uh, it was uh, more or less um, pioneered and there were very few experience with inborn errors of immunity transplanted with PTCY, um, the most severe patients were uh, driven to uh, transplant, and we have more uh, uh, progressively learned how to um, select the, the patient uh, to drive to these uh, procedures. Um, I can go on with my slides. Okay. Uh, so, as I said, it's a monocentric uh, retrospective studies. We have included patients from uh, late 2014 to uh, December 2022. There are 74 patients uh, included, all transplanted for inborn of immunity. So, we haven't included in this analysis patients transplanted for other uh, inborn errors such as osteopetrosis. Uh, only first transplant are uh, analyzed uh, and uh, only patient with a uh, T-repleted haplotransplant with a PTCY transplanted in Necker. And I will present you the overall survival, the EFS, the uh, cumulative incidence of DVHD, late autoimmunity and uh, viral uh, infection, as few data on quality of immune uh, reconstitution uh, for these 74 uh, patients. Oh, sorry, but I can't go on. Okay, um, so uh, this patient suffered mainly um, from combined immune uh, deficiency and HLH, um, uh, and also a group of 16 patients with a mix of uh, uh, different diseases. There were only two skid uh, patients out of these 74 uh, patients. Um, Uh, in the uh, combined immune deficiency group, there were uh, many different diseases uh, with eight uh, uh, Wiscott Aldrich syndrome, five MHC2, uh, three hypomorphic RAC, and then uh, a mixed bag of uh, many different combined immune deficiency. Uh, Okay, the median age uh, was uh, 1.28 years. Uh, half of the cohort were less than uh, one year, uh, and they were uh, followed for a median of uh, three years. Uh, they were all very uh, sick patients for most of them with a high morbidity uh, situation before transplant related to active infection at the time of transplantation with a uh, one third of the cohort who had uh, active CMV infection at the time of uh, transplantation. There were also a high proportion of patients with uh, organ uh, impairment, some had autoimmunity uh, inflammation, uh, and uh, only two patients had lymphoproliferation in partial uh, remission at the time of uh, transplantation. Regarding the uh, transplant characteristics, the donor were mainly the father. Um, there were uh, 20 uh, mothers and also a few uh, other uh, intrafamilial uh, family uh, donors. Conditioning was uh, uh, 
almost homogeneous, uh, uh, composed of uh, busulfan and uh, fludarabine in 70 out of 74 patients. And the uh, uh, four remaining patients were uh, transplanted at the beginning of our experience with a reduced in, uh, intensity conditioning based on Baltimore or Flumel. Uh, and two skids were transplanted with serotherapy only. This was two uh, very sick um, skid with a parainfluenza. Uh, the uh, backbones of the uh, MAC conditioning is shown on the uh, picture. Uh, it started uh, with a rituximab followed by uh, alemtuzumab uh, up front, day minus 11, day minus 10, followed by uh, busulfan with uh, AUC, um, fludarabine and uh, post-sy cyclophosphamide followed by uh, cyclosporine and MMF uh, GVH prophylaxis uh, for uh, all patients. Regarding the AUC of busulfan, uh, we started from uh, MAC and we progressively uh, decreased the AUC based on uh, the um, toxicity we observed, especially uh, in HLH patient. And I will uh, come back uh, on uh, uh, that uh, specificity. So now nowadays, the uh, median AUC uh, is more around 70 uh, than uh, 80 uh, that we uh, targeted at the beginning. If we start with the overall survival for the whole cohort of uh, 74 patients, the overall survival is uh, 82%. Uh, percent. Uh, we uh, faced 13 out of 74 deaths, uh, mainly from uh, rejection, uh, non-engraftment in two patients, disease related in two, infection, uh, which was the main cause of death in seven patients and toxicities in two patients. If we look to the overall survival over time and we divide the period in two uh, before uh, 2019 and 2019 and after, we see that the overall survival uh, improved uh, in the most uh, recent period, probably because we uh, better uh, selected the, the patient and we started the program with the, the sickest patient uh, where um, there were no choice than going to uh, transplant. Uh, since 2019, we had three deaths, uh, one uh, HLH who died of parainfluenza, uh, one uh, HLH who died of adenovirus, and one CGD who died of non-engraftment and uh, uh, aspergillosis. If we look to the overall survival uh, per disease, uh, in combined immune deficiency, uh, 34 uh, patients, the overall survival is above 95%. In the HLH, which is um, a very difficult group to uh, transplant, 24 patients, the overall survival is, is uh, 80%. And in the other patient, uh, which is a, a mixture of very different situation with the uh, very sick uh, skid uh, in two patients, two very uh, sick IPEX patients with uh, one who had a, a renal graft and another one with a very early onset polyviscerol autoimmunity, one CAR9 with a visceral uh, fungal infection and one uh, CGD. So very different kind of, uh, of disease. Uh, if we look to the overall survival as a function of clinical status, uh, we see that uh, active infection has some uh, impact and also the organ damage at the time of transplantation had a significant impact uh, in terms of uh, survival. For engraftment, we had a probability of graft failure uh, rejection of 11 uh, person. Uh, while we observed a uh, um, median uh, neutrophil engraftment of 21 days and platelet engraftment uh, of um, 20 days in median. We uh, faced, faced six uh, graft failure, five uh, after uh, view uh, flu uh, conditioning regimen, one after um, reduced intensity uh, conditioning, uh, flumel, and five were uh, successfully uh, retransplanted. Uh, the prob the prob probability of even free uh, survival for the, ho the whole cohort was 71.7%, uh, 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 and uh, death, uh, graft failure, boost, extensive chronic GVHD, and use of uh, antiviral CTL were count as uh, events in these uh, EFS.
if we look to uh, toxicities, which is uh, one, one of the pitfalls for, of this uh, approach, uh, we, uh, I divided the, the population uh, regarding uh, as a function of the uh, diagnosis, uh, combined immune deficiency, HLH, and patient with other uh, diagnosis, uh, because we observed um, very different pictures based on the uh, underlying disease. Uh, the highest uh, toxicities complication occurred in the HLH uh, group uh, with a very high rate of uh, VOD in this patient, uh, 54%. Uh, it's also in this HLH group that we observed uh, some uh, TMA and uh, pulmonary uh, hypertension. So a high rate of uh, endothelial toxicities in uh, this HLH group. And we know this is uh, a group of uh, uh, very peculiar uh, patient, uh, usually very young with a high risk of uh, endothelial toxicities due to, due to the uh, underlying disease and the infl inflammation uh, condition. If we look to the combined immune deficiency, we had a rate of 12% of VOD, which is more or less what we expect with a view-based uh, conditioning. And in the others, which were also a high-risk group, we observed 20% uh, of uh, VOD. Looking to GVHD, uh, we have uh, GVHD with a, a cumulative incidence of uh, acute GVHD grade two to four of uh, around uh, 35%. If we uh, look to the uh, grade of GVHD, these were mostly uh, grade two GVHD with a low rate of grade three, uh, grade four uh, GVHD, and we had a low rate of chronic uh, GVHD. Regarding the uh, infectious complication, the uh, cumulative risk of uh, uh, CMV uh, infection and disease are uh, shown on the left. You see that we observed uh, some CMV uh, infection and some patient arrived to transplant with active CMV infection, as I said, but we observed very few uh, CMV uh, disease. Two patients at uh, adenovirumia, uh, one required uh, injection of CTL and recovered uh, after uh, the CTL uh, injection. Uh, and uh, I also have to say that we introduced the uh, Letermovir uh, in 2021 in the unit and uh, it probably will change the uh, future and the rate of uh, CMV uh, reactivation after uh, transplantation. We have some uh, late onset autoimmunity uh, in our patient uh, with uh, some autoimmune cytopenia that occurred in around uh, 15 uh, person in cumulative incidence, and also a few uh, other autoimmunity, mostly uh, thyroiditis uh, that we observed a bit later in the course of the uh, patient. For the immune reconstitution, uh, I look to uh, the, uh, the uh, median time of uh, uh, CD4 uh, higher than 50, CD3 higher than 300, CD4 higher than 200, and CD3 higher than 1000. And as you can see, uh, the, the expansion of CD4 and CD3 were uh, highly variable in the population. If I look to the median time of CD4 above 50, it was reached uh, at 70 days, uh, while uh, the CD3 uh, above uh, 300 was reached uh, around 90 days post uh, transplant. There were a huge variability in the kinetics of uh, immune uh, reconstitution for uh, CD4 uh, and uh, especially CD8 that was uh, sometimes related to expansion of CD8 uh, in response to uh, infection. And the naive CD4 and CD8 uh, progressively increase uh, after four months post uh, transplant and reach uh, normal value uh, between nine and 12 months post uh, transplantation. So uh, if I uh, draw some conclusion of uh, our experience uh, in, uh, in Necker, uh, we can say that uh, this uh, PTCY approach is a feasible option uh, 
with improving uh, overall survival and EFS uh, over time. Uh, it remains uh, intense management uh, for, uh, for the patient, especially for patients with a, a high risk uh, transplant such as uh, HLH. We can also see some learning curve. Uh, I think over time we have improved to better uh, select the, the patient. Um, and uh, it may explain the uh, improvement of the results uh, in the most uh, recent period. Uh, we still face uh, toxicities, as I said, in HLH, and this need uh, some uh, improvement. Uh, graph failure was not a big uh, issue in uh, this uh, group of patients. Uh, and it's uh, uh, particularly uh, important for HLH because we know this is a disease with a uh, significant risk of uh, non engraftment or uh, loss of uh, chimerism. I didn't mention that uh, most of the patient had a full donor chimerism and remain full donor chimerism uh, over time. We observe a strong impact of donor uh, of organ damage uh, before uh, transplant. We uh, face some problem with the viral reactivation, mainly CMV. Um, but again, uh, Litermovi may change uh, the, uh, the field or in, in the future. Uh, and we observe um, good naive T cells for constitution after uh, three to four months. Uh, acute GVHD occurs in this patient, uh, but it's usually grade two, manageable. We had few grade three, grade four, and few uh, chronic uh, GVHD. The late autoimmunity and especially autoimmune cytopenia was one of our concerns at the beginning of our experience, but we, we faced more of the less of these problems in the uh, more uh, recent uh, period. So um, this data are just uh, um, uh, to give you uh, a picture of the possibilities in a, a single center and, and also highlights the uh, improvement over time and the learning curve um, for, this, uh, for this approach. I will now move uh, on a more specific disease, which is um, uh, CGD. Um, you all know CGD, I don't have to present you this uh, primary immune deficiency that is related to a defect in uh, an ADPH uh, oxidase. This disease is uh, uh, giving uh, some infection and especially uh, aspergillosis and uh, uh, fungi infection, uh, bacterial infection with the uh, abscesses, uh, like you can see here in uh, liver. Uh, and on top of this infection, patient can also have inflammation with a uh, uh, granulomatous uh, inflammation, especially in the gut, but also the lung can be uh, one of uh, the um, affected uh, organs. Um, we know that uh, hematopoietic stem, stem cell transplantation uh, is curative in, in CGD and uh, uh, thanks to the very huge uh, efforts of uh, Robert Chiesa and the Inboneros Working Party uh, a few uh, years ago, uh, who put the data together for more than 700 uh, patients transplanted all over the world. The overall survival uh, with uh, uh, transplantation were uh, great with uh, an overall, overall survival of uh, 85% uh, uh, and uh, EFS of uh, 76%. Uh, In this study, uh, the number of patients transplanted with mismatched family donor were limited with 36 uh, patients. And in this group of patients, the overall survival was 80% with an even free survival of 62.5%. Uh, so uh, lower than in the uh, matched family uh, donor and much unrelated uh, donor. So uh, we wanted to ask the questions of the outcome of uh, CGD uh, upload transplant in the, in the most uh, recent period. The, the data from Chiesa uh, and collaborators uh, stopped in 2018. Uh, there are few uh, case reports in the literatures of uh, APLO uh, transplant, uh, and there are also uh, one uh, small series of seven cases uh, put it together by the colleague of the NIH, showing that uh, PTCY approach in seven patients with CGD 
uh, could not prevent uh, GVHD, and two patients in the out of these seven patients died of uh, CGD, uh, of uh, chronic GVHD. Sorry. So uh, we uh, decided to uh, do a retrospective studies uh, inside the Inbonero's working uh, party. Uh, and we uh, included patient uh, with a genetically or functionally prov proven uh, CGD uh, who receive a first APLO uh, transplant, a rescue transplant were not included. Um, the patient needed to be uh, transplanted with an intrafamilial mismatch donor uh, and they uh, should have received TCR-alpha-beta or a PTCY uh, approach. Uh, the patient were uh, picked up by uh, uh, PROMISE uh, database, and we uh, also ask uh, centers for additional uh, information. Uh, I will present you today the uh, interim analysis of the first uh, 54 uh, patients, uh, but uh, uh, 66 patients will be included uh, in the final uh, analysis. The last patients uh, are still um, on the way of uh, being included. So the primary objective of these studies is to, of course, describe the population, the overall survival and the even free uh, survival, uh, cumulative incidence of uh, GVHD and the outcome of uh, disease burden uh, manifestation. And we will also look to the uh, difference uh, between PTCY and CC alpha beta uh, depletion. 36 centers uh, participated to uh, this uh, study, uh, so 54 patients were included, uh, mostly male, and this is related to the nature of uh, the disease. They were uh, more uh, excellent CGD in 70% of the patients, uh, the rest were uh, a mixture of autosomal recessive form of uh, CGD. As you can see, uh, this is a growing activities with very few uh, patient transplanted uh, in 2014-15, and then it progressively increased up to 2021. Uh, the numbers of 2022 are probably biased because of the uh, delay in uh, inclusion of patients in, in PROMISE. Uh, 31 patients were uh, transplanted with TC-alpha-beta uh, CD19 depletion, while uh, 23 patients receive a PTCY approach. The age of transplantation were uh, significant, significantly different between the two groups. Younger in the, PT, in the uh, TC alpha beta uh, group with a median age of 3.3, while it was 6.4 in the PTCY uh, approach. Regarding the uh, description, uh, the characteristic of the patient, uh, the percentage of uh, excellent CGD was comparable between the two groups. The clinical status uh, showed some differences uh, with a, a similar rate of uh, infection before uh, transplantation, but a higher rate of colitis uh, in PTCY as compared to TC-alpha-beta CD19 uh, depletion. Uh, lung inflammation were also similar and they were a trend for more patients under immunosuppressive at the time of transplantation in the PTCY group, and it's probably related to the higher rate of um, colitis at the time of transplant. The reason for uh, going to upload transplant in these uh, patients were also different between the two uh, approach. Um, we had more patients with uh, severe uh, inflammation and infection uh, that driven the decision to go to uh, transplant, while they were more uh, preemptive uh, um, uh, transplant in the TC-alpha beta uh, CD19 uh, depletion. They were also more uh, uh, inflammation that driven the decision to go to uh, transplant in the PTCY group. So some differences, again, in the uh, status of the patient uh, between the two uh, approach. Uh, the median age, I told you, there are some differences. Conditioning is also uh, significantly different with more uh, view uh, approach conditioning in the PTCY uh, group and more uh, trio uh, uh, based um, uh, conditioning in the uh, um, PTCY, um, in the, sorry, in the, in the, the TC alpha beta. 
um, depletion group, and I think there is a mistake in these uh, numbers. It's why I'm a bit lost, but uh, I can tell you there were more more uh, tree or flu uh, tiotipa uh, transplant in the um, uh, TC alpha beta CD19 uh, depletion. Sorry for these mistakes. Um, uh, most of the patients receive uh, some serotherapy. Um, mixture of uh, Gravalon, ATG, and Alentuzumab, more uh, Alentuzumab, but it was not significant in the uh, BTCY. And the source, the source of stem cells were uh, significantly different with only uh, peripheral stem cells in the TC alpha beta CD19 depletion as expected, and more bone marrow uh, cells in uh, BTCY. If we look to the overall survival for these 64 uh, patients, uh, uh, it reached uh, an overall survival of uh, 76%. Uh, uh, the, uh, if we look to the uh, main uh, outcome, uh, there were um, uh, eight deaths in the TC alpha beta uh, depletion group and two deaths in the PTCY. Uh, as we can see, uh, we'll see on the next uh, slides, it looks like it's different, but it's not significantly different. Uh, the rate of engraftment was similar uh, with the uh, same rate of uh, rejection between the two uh, approach. Uh, acute GVHD uh, is uh, um, uh, found in uh, the two group uh, uh, without uh, differences, uh, even though the grade for uh, three and four or was probably a bit higher in the uh, PTCY than in the TC alpha beta uh, depletion, and the rate of chronic GVHD was low in, in the two uh, group. If we look to the overall survival as a function of the uh, transplant approach, uh, the overall survival for uh, PTCY was 91%, with two deaths out of 23 uh, patients of uh, infection and re rejection for the two patients. While in the TC alpha beta CD19 depletion, uh, we observed eight deaths out of uh, uh, 31 uh, patients, so the overall survival was uh, 63, with uh, the main cause of death being rejection and infection in half of them, infection alone in three patients, and GVHD in uh, one patient. But again, the, the group of patients is small, and this is not uh, significantly uh, different. If we look to the overall survival as a function of age at, at transplant, uh, taking five years uh, uh, as a threshold, which is the median uh, age of the uh, cohort, uh, you see there is uh, uh, absolutely no uh, difference in the younger or the older uh, patient. So uh, it's probably uh, too early to conclude for these uh, very preliminary uh, data uh, regarding aplotransplant in CJD. We are all convinced that the natural history of CJD invite to consider uh, early uh, definitive therapy. Um, and um, we are more and more uh, offering transplantation to these patients when uh, match family donor or match unrelated donor uh, are uh, available. And the place of uh, APLO transplant uh, in these settings is still uh, uh, an open question. We see that um, the numbers of transplant uh, with the APLO, uh, TC alpha beta and PTCY are rapidly increasing in these uh, disease. But again, the comparison is biased by the differences in the population and the differences in the uh, conditioning regimen. Uh, these uh, approach uh, are feasible for patients with high risk um, and uh, can be proposed uh, as a rescue when the patient is really in need of uh, uh, a cell uh, therapy. Uh, and. Uh, uh, Nowadays, uh, we don't see uh, strong uh, factors that influence the uh, overall survival and the even free survival, but that will need to be uh, currently uh, more deeply uh, analyzed when the uh, data collection will be finished. With all of this, I would like to uh, thank my colleague from the unit for the first part of the talk. Uh, and would like also to thank uh, the EBMT data office for uh, the collection of the uh, CGD um, uh, data, my co-chair, uh, Michael Albert, my co-PI, uh, Typhoon uh, Gungor, uh, Mary Slatter, my colleague, Quentin Riller, who helped me in the, for the uh, statistical analysis of the CGD uh, data in the very, very last minute. 
and Matthias Orey uh, who also uh, will analyze the data with us from uh, he's from uh, uh, Zurich and of course I thank you all the centers that include the data and I thank you all of you for your attention thank you Thank you very much, both of you. Excellent presentations um, and exciting data. And we already have a few questions in the chat, and I'm sure there will be more coming. Um, I will start with the first one to Suhan. Um, thank you for the presentation. How did you choose between the two treatments in the retrospective cohort? Uh, thank you for the questions. Um, so, so for this retrospective study, actually based on the center. So um, the center either using the um, alphabet division of PTCY. So this is not a randomized uh, control study. It's just based on the, the center practice. Yes, thank you. And the next question goes to Benedict. Um, do you observe outcome differences if the mother is the donor in your cohort, in your Haplo cohort? Uh, I think we do not observe any difference when the mother is the donor, but uh, I should uh, recheck carefully to to be to give a strong answer. But you do have a preference for the father if yes. there's no other reason not to do it, right? Mm. Yes. So that explains the mm. majority. We have a less mother than father, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question goes to both of you, I believe. Um, what are your recommendations in the case of loss of engraftment in CGD patients? Um, relevant question. Um, I would say it depends uh, the the level of uh, DHR uh, you reach with the uh, mixed chimerism, um, but uh, if uh, the DHR is less than 15, 20, probably you have to reconsider a new transplantation or at least discuss a new transplantation with the patient and the family. And the way you uh, retransplant really depends on uh, the donor, uh, the status of the patient. It's always difficult to give a strong advice for a second transplant because there are many factors that uh, drive the decision. So, so Han, your take on this? So, so, so we have a very similar approach, but in terms of donor, we um, it's not an issue for us. We have to say that um, so for us uh, the question if the patient uh fulfill the indication for transplant, then we'll go straight on transplants. If they don't have the matched donor, then we we'll go for haploid donor, either using parents or mismatch on the donor, and then we we'll do alpha beta depletion. Thank you. Um, the next question is probably easy to answer. Uh, can we proceed to transplant even if there is active colitis in CGD, um, maybe Sohan? So, so what we practice in Newcastle that we will actually treat the patients with a, a duration of stable and infliximab and hope to achieve remissions or control the colitis before going to transplant. That is what, what we do in Newcastle. Yeah, but if you cannot reach uh, a remission of the colitis, you would probably still proceed to transplant, correct? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah so. We always try to uh, uh, have less inflammation as possible before transplant, but uh, sometimes it's not possible and uh, it's not a reason not to do the transplantation. Yeah, I agree. And sometimes the colitis is quite responsive to higher doses of steroids, so you could do a short round of high dose steroids immediately before the transplant, if you wanted to. Um, Benedict, there's one more question for you from Alexandra. Uh, do you perform haplotransplant in IEI only in the absence of a MUD, or do you sometimes also choose haplo even if there are MUDs? Uh, the answer is uh, variable, I would say. It depends on the, uh, the disease. If we have a HLH, um, MUD only in Brazil with a very long uh, delay in uh, reaching uh, the, the graft, we go to APLO. But if we can have uh, APLO in a reasonable, reasonable uh, time, we, we will go to MUD. 
The next one is actually more a comment than a question uh, from Anders Fast. Uh, he says, Benedict, interesting that you prefer fathers. In Costa Rica, where they do HAPLO without PTCI or T cell depletion, only strong immunosuppression, so in vivo T cell depletion, they prefer mothers. And for example, for osteopetrosis, they have the same good uh, results. Would you want to comment on that? Uh, the, 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 our choice of the father instead of the mother, the mother is always the risk of uh, the theoretical increased risk of TVHT with the mother. Um, but uh, I think the data are not uh, very strong and uh, I'm not surprised that other centers uh, prefer the, the mother and are, and are happy with this. So um, yeah. no strong comment, I would say, on my side. Also reflects our practice. We yes. tend to just yes. choose the younger, healthier. Yes. And but also sometimes the, and blood type yes, the CMV uh, would be even stronger than the sex of the donor. Yeah, I agree. Um, so Han, the next question is for you. Um, can you explain your preference to ATG, not CAMPATH in Haplotisia alpha beta depletion uh, serotherapy? Right. Uh, this is a very good question. Actually, Talking about the history, we actually started to use, use lm 2 for alpha beta depletion first uh, back in 2012. Actually, patients are actually doing very well. And we actually give the CAMPAP more distal to the graph. But because we are actually joining a study, um, a pelicum study, we need to use the trial protocol. And that's why we switched to ATG Cuffalon. And, and it has been doing very well. So we just continue with ATG. And we know the ATG uh, PK study quite well from Leiden group. And this is the reason why we continue to using this for our upcoming trial. Okay, thank you. Um, now we have a lot of questions coming in and I will have to choose some. Um, this one's interesting. Um, probably goes to both of you as to IEI patients with autoimmunity before transplant. Is the rate of GBHD similar without autoimmunity or is it higher in your experience? Maybe you can both give a comment on that. So, so, so I can start answering the question. It's, it's a very interesting question. Uh, we have not specifically looked at this uh, in some of the outcome for GBHD, but in Newcastle, we have looked at uh, the, the post transplant autoimmunocytopenia. What we noticed that if the patients have pre-transplant autoimmune cytopenia, they have higher chance to develop autoimmune cytopenia post-transplant. For example, we know that one in 10 uh, IEI patients will develop autoimmune cytopenia, but in a patient with pre-transplant autoimmunity, it's about, it's about four in 10 patients will develop autoimmune cytopenia post-transplants. Um, I don't have a strong answer to that because I didn't look specifically to these uh, variable. Uh, I can say that um, more than in autoimmunity, inflammation after uh, before transplant will uh, account for the risk of uh, GVHD. The more uh, a patient is inflamed, uh, the, the increased is the risk of GVHD. And especially when one organ is inflamed, uh, the risk of uh, GVHD in this organ is increased. Um, there's another interesting question. You may not have the data to answer, but I will pose it anyhow. Um, thanks for the excellent talk. Was any difference found in terms of risk of graft failure or immune reconstitution between X-linked and autosomal recessive donor mothers? So I assume this refers to the CGD cohort, it's an excellent yeah. question. Uh, actually, um, we asked this question in the question in the, in the questionnaire, uh, and there they were very few uh, carriers uh, as a donor in the cohort. There were two, actually, and the, um, the outcome of the patient were good because they were uh, full chimerism. So I think we have too few data to answer the question. Yeah. So we have two questions regarding SCID. Um, uh, first one goes to you, Benedict, again from Alexandra from Moscow. There are very few SCID patients in your PTCY cohort. What option would you prefer for Hoplo in SCID? Uh, very good uh, point indeed. There are very few uh, 
uh, skid in our cohort, uh, but we do transplant skids. So it means that we transplant them in a, a different way. Uh, and uh, we uh, uh, we prefer the T cell depletion uh, approach with the uh, CD34 uh, selection, uh, and we uh, some of these patients are, are included in a prospective protocol with the reinjection of pro, pro T cells. So it's wow. uh, it's explained why uh, there are so few uh, skid, and also because our two only skid patients that were uh, treated with this approach both died. So. We were not very keen to continue with this approach, but I know that uh, the Brazilian colleague um, uh, do uh, a lot of PTCY uh, upload transplant in skid uh, with uh, uh, reasonably good uh, results. Uh, also, uh, they have very very sick skid, so uh, the results are interesting and worth uh, looking more in detail. Yeah. Um, there's actually a comment also from Carmen from Brazil. Hi, Carmen. Uh, Hi, Carmen. That they also prefer the younger male donor for their upload PTCY protocol. Yeah. And if she could uh, talk, she could uh, uh, mention her experience in uh, uh, PTCY in Skid, which is uh, impressive. Yeah. There's also a question from Olaf from Sibi. Um, great presentations. Could you? Please both comment on your experience using protransplant in patients with Artemis skit with maternal engraftment. So very specific situation, but difficult question. Swan, do you want to go first? So, 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 so <clears throat> definitely this is a very important clinical question. Uh, so in general, if the patients have omen features or maternal engraftment, what we usually do, we will start cyclosporine before transplant to control the symptom before going to transplant. So we will still do the same thing. We give a food driving trial sulfur and ATG and for the transplants. For me, um, it would depend on the clinical status of the patient. If the patient has no uh, viral infection uh, uh, on board, uh, we would uh, probably do uh, there was no mud in the uh, clinical case, I guess. Uh, we would go for APLO uh, with a, um, a depletion, one, what kind of uh, TC alpha beta or CD34 positive selection. Uh, we may also consider um, uh, gene therapy because uh, we have a trial uh, open for the moment for um, Artemis. So it would probably be our first choice if the child would uh, be on our care. Yeah. Um, another question that more refers to pre transplant management for um, patients with IPEX with refractory colitis. Would you also treat the colitis as much as possible if serolitis has not worked before transplant? Uh, yes, definitely for IPEX, I would try to uh, put him on, on the best remission possible before transplant, including with uh, uh, alemtuzumab upfront, alemtuzumab or jacinib. Um, but uh, we would really uh, begin to obtain a remission before transplant to uh, avoid uh, GVHD after uh, transplant. Yeah. So now Carmen is commenting. <laughs> yes, we have no PTCY for skid. I'm just going to read it. No other option. But we have a lot of moderate and severe VOD, something that we don't see in other diseases. Um, Alexandra, we would be happy to talk more about this. If you have any specific questions, please send me an email. <laughs> this is real inborn errors working party. Great. <laughs> um, Anders is asking, did you analyze any risk factors for autoimmunity in your cohorts? Uh, yes, I did. And uh, uh, we didn't really find uh, strong factors in, in explaining this autoimmunity. So, huh? so, so, so what we have done uh, to look at the autoimmunity whole transplant for um, inborn errors or immunity, basically we split into two analyses, one to look specific on autoimmune cytopenia. And uh, we done a single standard 
study and also multi center study, including a great woman street and Lighten. What, what we noticed is that the use of LN2 somats and delay immune reconstitution and delay time of poiesis are the main risk factor developed autoimmune cytopenia. On top of the patients uh, with pre transplant autoimmune cytopenia, then the risk is much higher compared to patients without autoimmune cytopenia. For the post transplant um, non hematologic autoimmunity, we didn't find any specific risk factor in our 20 years uh, uh, study. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one question which is probably easier to answer. In mm -hmm. your experience, what is the average time to transplant with each platform? I believe the question relates to how quickly can you provide this um, transplant if needed? So, so, so in your case, uh, I think the, the easier to answer the question is looking at the skip patients. So for uh, now we have changed how we, we choose a donor or donor hierarchy for skip patients. So if the patients have a mesh family donor, then we will go straight to transplant probably in between four, six weeks time. But if they don't have a mesh family donor, we actually prefer to use haploid rather than mesh family donor, unless they have a readily available uh, cord unit. That is what, what we are practicing now. For, for the non-skid IEI, it all depends on the indications. So for us, the first question now is what is the indication for transplanted patients? If it's indicated, we will go straight to mesh amylid donor, or if there isn't any, then we'll actually go for haploid transplant. Benedict? And if we have decided to go for aplo, uh, we usually have, uh, we usually need uh, two or three weeks to organize the transplant, not more than uh, it's still a very fast way to go to transplant and the fastest way. Um, I agree. We have one more difficult question left, so I left it for last. <laughs> um, uh, but I'll give you both a chance to answer it. Uh, which level of chimerism in CGD and skid patients are acceptable after transplant? It's a general question. Benedict, do you want to go first? Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, I'll start with skit uh, because it's probably uh, the easiest. Uh, we definitely don't need a uh, full donor chimerism in skit uh, and uh, a very low uh, um, myeloid chimerism uh, is probably uh, enough. Uh, the T cells will be, of course, donor origin um, because of the selective advantage of the uh, uh, lymphoid precursors in, in skid. So I would not be worried with a, a very mixed chimerism uh, in skid. In CGD, um, again, uh, we need some uh, myeloid chimerism, uh, a certain level of donor chimerism to be allowed uh, to have a, a correction of CGD-related symptoms. Uh, and I would look more to the DHR mode more than the chimerism uh, by itself. Uh, and um, as we discussed earlier, uh, I would be worried with a DHR less than 20%. And I would start to be worried uh, a bit before 20, probably. <laughs> Let's say you have a stable myeloid DHR chimerism of 15% and they're completely asymptomatic patients. I will wait. Do something, you would wait. Wait and see. Yeah. So, hard. yes, I think this is a millionaire question. So, I will start with skid as well. So, in Newcastle, in general, we actually give a patient um, chemotherapy, a uh, food driving trial seven to get a reasonably good um, chimerism. And the aim is actually to the patients uh, could off immunoglobulin, have had the quality of life. And this has been proven uh, by NDs, a PhD student. So, so in our experience, we actually just look at the hundreds of skid patients receive food driving child supplements conditioning. What we noticed that in general, if they have more than 5% milder chimerism, they should be able to off immunoglobulin replacement in long term and have good uh, resting response and also able to off antibiotics prophylaxis. But there is a few patients, about five patients, we don't understand why they have a good milder chimerism, like even 50% and 70%. They, 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 they don't have a, a good IgM production and they still require 
uh, long-term immunocopy placement. So it's just this five patients, we don't know why, despite very good myelochimerism, they're, they're still uh, dependent on immunocopy replacement. For CGD, I do agree with uh, with uh, Panedic that about 20%. And when we actually did a study to look at the core relationship between myelochimerism and THR, they actually corresponding quite well. If you have 20% myelochimerism, your THR is always is 20%. And when we look at the kinetic of uh, uh, myelochimerism and in long term, once they stabilize until after one year, usually they don't drop further. That means they will be continued with 20%. And in this situation, I agree with Panedic, we will just observe and see. And this also had to factor in whether the, the donor is a carrier or is a is a normal uh, unrelated donor. The carrier might, we might need a higher chimerism. Thank you. Um, I have one last question, which is, which is also not exactly easy, um, mm -hmm. answer, but maybe you can offer some general thoughts and then after that we will close this. Uh, okay. So the majority of IEI patients will have infection when receiving transplantation. With the IEI patients of uncontrolled infection, how do you balance the risk and benefits of transplantation? Wow, this is a tough question for for the the uh, end of the uh, the session. Uh, I think it's really really dependent of the disease you are treating. In a skid uh, patient, uh, there was no way of uh, no reason to wait because uh, we know that T cells is the best treatment for many uh, in viral infection. I'm talking about viral infection. Of course, if you have a sepsi a bacterial sepsis, you will treat the sepsis before. Uh, starting a uh, conditioning regimen, but uh, for a viral infection, I think uh, we all agree that you have to go straight to transplant. For um, uh, CGD, uh, for example, it's different. If we have a CMV reactivation, we will treat the CMV reactivation before uh, going to uh, transplant. Uh, and for uh, the very large, broad uh, combined immune deficiency uh, baskets, uh, again, it will depend on the severity of the uh, combined immune deficiency. Uh, if it's not too severe, uh, it's always good to um, treat the virus if the virus is treatable. Um, if it's a respiratory infection and the patient has uh, enough uh, immunity to get rid of the uh, viral infection, it's probably better to wait. So. Uh, it's impossible to give a rules. It really depends from one disease to the other. And it's why uh, these transplantation need to be uh, done by experienced centers in uh, in bone areas of immunity uh, transplants. Couldn't agree more. Um, so, Han, do you want to add anything to that? Or is that also your... So, so I do agree what uh, Kennedy say. So, so what we do for skid patients who are uncontrolled infection, so we will do a unconditioned uh, alpha beta activated uh, stem cell infusion. Of course, more recently we also uh, on the memory T cell, and we actually uh, doing quite well in some patients uh, with uh, CMV or RSV, even they are on peace ICU uh, 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 for ventilation. And some of the patients, uh, we will do a second procedure later when the patient recover to for the long-term uh, myelochimerism and also uh, of immunoglobulin. Yeah, that's what we, we are doing now. So for the non-skid IEI, those patients with a lot of infection. So sometimes they have to be in the hospital for a few months for us to optimize the treatments and also the organ function before we go into transplants. Yes, I agree. Thank, Thank you very much. Both of you. Thank uh, you, Michael. Thank you, Suhan. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you to the, the attendees and yes. for the questions. Thank you all for uh, attending and listening and asking excellent questions. Uh, thank you to ESID for organizing these grand rounds, uh, which are really nice and well established, and hope you will join next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Enjoy the summer. Bye. Bye.